Hello, my friends, and welcome back to another episode of the Euro Cooking Canuck. Once again, thank you so very much for joining me today. Big hello to all of my new subscribers and a welcome back to all of my current subscribers. Guys, on today's segment of Memories of Macedonia, we're going to be making something that is not only loved all over Macedonia, but the entire Balkan region. Macedonia is quite famous for it, actually. What we're making today is called kifli. What is kifli, you may ask? Well, that is a Macedonian crescent roll. Now, they could be plain, they could be savory with cheese, or they can even be sweet with jam. So, guys, without further ado, let's get in the kitchen and make Macedonian famous kifli. Bye. <laughs> Welcome to the kitchen countertop. As usual, all of the ingredient amounts will be below. Now below this video, you will see a description. And then you may see show more. Click on that and you'll see all the ingredient amounts. Guys, I'm starting off with some warm uh, cup of milk. All right, to which I'm going to go ahead and add yeast. Guys, you've seen this before. sugar just to feed it. I'm going to leave this for about 15 minutes until it gets nice and frothy and if it does, excuse me, if it doesn't you know that your yeast is dead and is not activated and you just have to start over. All right that's the first step. In the background here I have my flour and I'll show you what I'm going to do Hey gang, welcome back to the kitchen countertop. As you can see, my yeast has gotten nice and bubbly, but it's activated, and it really smells yeasty and bready, if that makes any sense. So I'm going to go ahead now and add this to my flour. Again, guys, all the amounts will be below in the description bar. Look at show more. I've had some people ask me, there's the recipe comment guys you just need to click on show more because I always add a description of what the recipe is so you know you need to show more space so show more right so that's in which now I'm going to add some salt Going to add yogurt, yogurt, my cat's crying because she thinks it's a tuna, a tin of tuna, it's not for you Nandula. Going to add rest of the milk and then my eggs so I'm going to give this a mix love these eggs guys when your yolks are very dark, almost orangey red, you know that the eggs are fresh and the chickens are probably free range. Just a tip. Now guys, always have some flour on standby and some extra water or milk if you need to. But this is looking quite great to me. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull all this together and I'll bring you back and show you what it's supposed to look like once all this is mixed. So 
Hey guys, so I'm working my dough. It's quite sticky, so I did add a little bit more flour to mine. I worked it in, it's not completely done. At this time, what I want to do is go ahead and add my oil. I don't add it with all the other ingredients right away, simply because you may think your dough is too wet and then you're going to end up adding way too much flour to it. So I've added it in now. Um, like I said, it's not completely um, together yet, so that's why I've added it in now. And I'm going to continue working this until I get a soft, supple dough, and then I'll bring you back. Hey guys, my dough is nice and soft, so what I want to do is I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit of flour on my board. I'll turn out my dough. I'm just going to give this a little bit of a knead. As you can see, it's quite soft. Becoming quite smooth. What I'm going to do now, guys, is I'm going to place this back in the bowl um, with just a very little bit of oil on top of it, just so it doesn't stick to the bowl. And I'm going to let this rise. We're going to leave this for about a half an hour until it doubles in size. Nice and soft, it bounces back. great. So I'm going to put this in my bowl, lightly oiled, and I'm going to cover it and let it rise for about a half an hour until it doubles in size, and I'll bring you back. Sleep tight. Hey my friends, so my dough has sat for about half hour, 45 minutes, voila, it is really risen. Now guys, you want to be really careful with this dough, you don't want to work it too much. Now at this point guys, what you, if you want, what you can do is you can cut this up into four pieces, roll them out, and then follow me when I start rolling them. However, the way I do this, let me remove my bowl. I'm going to cut this in half as even as I can. Okay, I'm going to take one half and put it back in my bowl and cover it for now. And then what you're going to want to do with this piece, as evenly as you can, cut this into five equal pieces. You can eyeball it first. So. One, two, three, and that's five. Make sure your counter's clean, guys. Disinfect. Great, so we have our five pieces. And what you're going to want to do now is gently Roll each piece into a ball. Tuck the bottoms in. This one could have been done better. Nice and soft and stretchy, guys, and it smells so good. Mm. 
let's pull and pull under. Pull and push under. That one's probably a little bit smaller, but it's okay. It's all good. It's going to work out in the wash. They're not a factory, guys. This is homemade. And my last piece here. Put it under. Pull. Under. Pull. Under. Feels so good. Nice and soft. Right. We got that. I'm just going to put a little bit of flour. On my board. And what I'm going to want to do now is roll each ball very gently. Don't push down too hard. Into a disc. About six inches. Looks great. Continue with the rest of your balls. We'll go, and I'll bring you back and show you what I do next. Hey guys, so I have all of my balls of dough rolled out into little discs. If they're not perfect, don't worry. They don't have to be perfect. The first thing I'm going to want to do is take one of my discs and I'm going to spread some room temperature margarine. You can use butter if you like, guys, but margarine is fine. Salted, unsalted, it doesn't really matter. Guys, I don't use unsalted butter. Half the time you end up having to add salt anyways. Then what you're going to do is place another disc on top of that disc. Trying to get it as even as you can. And again, place some margarine or butter. Guys, this method will help make your kifli really, really nice, tender, and just a little bit flaky and pulley. Pulley, is that a word? <laughs> you know what I mean. Got a disc. If we are made by region by region, in Macedonia and all over the Balkans differently um, or slightly differently, but the end result is pretty much always the same. So as you can see, it's getting to be like a stack. That is in there. It helps if your bar butter or margarine is room temperature, as I mentioned, guys. You don't want to tear the dough. Now, lastly, you're going to put your last disc on top, and you will not put any more margarine or butter on that. The last disc goes on top. And now, guys, this is where we must be very, very, very careful not to press down too, too hard. But we do want now to make all of these into one large disc. So I'm just going to put a little bit of flour like 
don't want any stickage. Borrow your pin, and then you're going to start from the middle, out, out, and out. Never do this. And give it a turn, flip it over. Out, 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 turn and flip it over. As you're going to continue with this, not too hard, take your time until you've reached about a foot or 12 inches to 15 inches, um, depending on um, how much dough you, you've made. Um, some of them could be a little bit smaller, some of them will be larger. You do not want this too thin, and of course you do not want it too thick. So I'm going to continue working at this. And I shall bring you back when I have the right size and thickness. Hey guys, my Kifli is rolled out to the thickness and the diameter that I want. It's about 15 inches or so. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut this into somewhat equal pie shapes. In the background, I have my baking pan lined with parchment paper ready to receive. So, without further ado, I'm going to cut down the center and find the middle here. Now, depending on how wide you want your kifli, depends on how many pieces you actually make. I don't want mine too, too thin. It's up to you guys. So I'm going to cut these into four. And I'm going to continue with the rest and I'll bring you back and show you the final steps on how we roll these up into presents. So guys, I got 16 pie shaped pieces in total. They're not all symmetrical or perfect because I'm a human. What I have here guys is I have some feta cheese crumbled up that I'm going to put into my kifli. Now you can leave these plain. You can put some jam in here if you like. Like I said, the jam normally that would be used would be um, rose hip, plum, or a quince. But I'm using cheese because I love it. So guys, just a bit of feta cheese on the wider end side of your kifli. I a cloth nearby so you can wipe your hands so nothing sticks. And then you're going to take the kifli and you're simply going to roll it up. You can stretch it a bit if you like. Like so. And then you can give it a bit of a crescent shape and then set it into your uh, baking tray lined with baking, uh, baking paper. So again, I'll show you another one real quick. Hopefully I'm showing you. This one look good? Yeah. So, a little bit of feta, did in you, put it down just a little bit, roll, and then, whoop, I haven't got caught on my nail, <laughs> roll it up, form it into a crescent shape, and add it to your pan. Guys, I'm going to continue with these, and what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to set these in your baking tray and just let them rise for about 15 minutes or so. Okay. 
some more here. Really simple, guys. Really, really, really easy. Okay? So I'm going to continue with the rest of my kifli. And when they're all done in the pan, I'll show you what I do next. Hey guys, so I've let my kifli sit for a little while um, and they've puffed up slightly, very nicely. And what I have over here is a beaten egg yolk, just a little drop of oil, not too much. And what I want to do now, and you may need more than one guys, because I got 32 kifli out of this batch. So what you're going to want to do now is lightly and gently coat your kifli in the egg wash. This will make a nice color and sheen. I'm not going to make you guys watch me do all of these, obviously. So once that is done, I hope you can see. What I have here are some sesame seeds. And then I'm going to sprinkle sesame seeds on top of my kifli. And then what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to finish the rest of my kifli. And I'm going to set these in an oven at 180C. And we're going to cook these for about 20 minutes or so until they come out golden. Keep an eye on them. Don't want them to burn. All right, so I've gone ahead, egg wash with egg yolk and a little bit of oil and some sesame seeds. All right, so I'm going to finish all of these. I'm going to put them in the oven at 180C and we'll see you when we take them out. Can't wait. Hey guys, my Kifli are out of the oven. Well, the first batch, the second batch is still in there. Uh, has a little bit more to go. Do you see these Kifli? Oh my God, le, le, how nice are they? Guys, I'm gonna let them cool down a little bit, um, but I want to put a little bit of butter real thing, not the margarine, guys. <laughs> I'm going to put some butter on top. Gives them a lovely sheen. I really can't wait for these to cool down. I need to try one. They smell incredible. Guys, you can serve these as they are. Um, they're a crowd pleaser. You can serve these um, with your dinner, of course, maybe with some hot peppers, um, some salad, whatever you like, however you like. Just have kifli, guys. Now, as I said, these are with cheese. You can have them plain, or you can make these sweet with some jam in there and have them for dessert. How beautiful are these, guys? Come on, really? I, I need, I need to. Look at that. Oh, they're really hot, guys. <laughs> oh, 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 really hot. <sighs> um, oh, the layers. Mm. Wow. Hot and I should let them cool down. Feta cheese is perfect. Guys, look at that. That's all those layers that we made from those stacks that we did. Oh. The pillow. Mmm. Sorry guys, I hate eating on camera, I really do. These are incredible. You need to make Keefley today. Seriously, 
You saw how easy it was. I'm gonna let these cool down. I'm gonna plate them up. And I'll see you in just a bit. Hey guys, my Keefley have cooled down just a bit for me to enjoy. I'm going to enjoy these uh, with some manja. And if you haven't seen my videos for manja, I shall place them below. They're quite old, but they're fantastic. Guys, this Keefley couldn't get any better. Honestly, this is so, so tender. The dough is perfect and it's just the right amount of cheese. Guys, there'll be a few picks to follow as usual, but I want to thank you so much for watching this episode of the Euro Cooking Canuck and Memories of Macedonia. And please like, please subscribe, and please share. I love all of your comments, and we'll see you next time on the Euro Cooking Canuck and Memories of Macedonia. Follow Noble, Ciao.